When I was in college, there was this new book series that was coming out. It was very popular, and some of you may have heard of it. It was the Harry Potter series. <laughs> and when the books were coming out, I was very excited about it. They were interesting reads, and I would devour these books. I remember one book I got, and in the space of two days, I finished the entire thing. I was just so excited about this series. But then here I am in college, and it turns out that the publishers for the next Harry Potter book that was coming out was the same publisher for a textbook that I needed for one of my classes. <laughs> and the publishers realized that there was more money in printing Harry Potter books than there were in printing textbooks. <laughs> so they stopped printing the textbook and printed more Harry Potter books. And I'm sure they made a ton of money much more so than if they'd made the handful of textbooks and I was able to purchase one. So I went through the majority of this semester in college without a textbook and I had to wait around after class sometimes for an hour or more to find someone who was willing to let me borrow their book so I could illegally make a photocopy of it so I could do the homework for class. <laughs> And I was so upset that I vowed that I would never read another Harry Potter book ever again. <laughs> and I didn't. I'd stopped reading the books, and even as big as they were, I wasn't going to read them. And the movies were coming out, and I'd watched some of the movies, but I didn't watch any of the movies beyond the books that I had already read. And I figured this was a great statement that I was making. I was taking this wonderful stand, and I'm sure J.K. Rowling has absolutely no idea that I did any of it. <laughs> but it felt good at the time. Fast forward a few years and I meet this young woman who eventually became my wife. And the topic of Harry Potter came up and I told her the same story I just told you and I refused to read <laughs> Harry Potter and that wasn't going to cut it. <laughs> and we could not start dating until I finished reading the series. <laughs> she is a huge Harry Potter fan. She has definitely read all of the books multiple times. She's seen all of the movies and before some of the movies she had me help her throw a Harry Potter party with themed food. We had gillyweed dip and Molly's famous meatballs and all sorts of great things. There were costumes. When we went on our honeymoon and went down to Orlando, Florida, she was slightly upset that we just went to Disney World and didn't take time to go over to Universal so we could go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. <laughs> it was a big deal to her, and at the time when I was refusing to read, she just took the next book that was in the series for me and she put it in my hand and said, here, read it. <laughs> and of course I did. Of course, I fell back in love with the series, and I've seen all of the movies now, and I've read all of the books. But it took her to be that passionate about it that she said, here, read it, and physically put the book in my hand for me to get it. It reminds me of Philip and Nathaniel in the Gospel lesson this morning. Because Philip meets Jesus... And Jesus says, follow me. And Philip realizes somehow that Jesus is the one about whom Moses and the prophets wrote. This is the one who's going to help deliver them from the hand of the Romans. This is the person who's going to be their Messiah. And he's so passionate that he has to go tell his friend Nathaniel. But Nathaniel doesn't quite get it. Nathaniel says, oh, he's from Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? It's kind of like us saying, can anything good come from that state up north? <laughs> can anything good come from Nazareth? And Philip didn't respond with a logical argument. He didn't say, well, you know, there are all these great people who've come from Nazareth. If you, if you think about these people, they're wonderful. And, oh, if you just talk, if you knew what Jesus was saying, he's, this is his message, and you, you get behind this message once you know it. He didn't do any of that. He simply said, come and see. Come and experience it for yourself. 
Because there are no words that I could say that will do justice to what it's like to meet Jesus. Because Jesus is the type of person that once you meet him, you just get it. You get what he's all about. When Jesus called his disciples, he didn't give them a list of reasons why they should follow him. He didn't give them a five-year plan of where he was going and what the goal was. He simply said, follow me. Oh, you're fishermen, I will make you fishers of men. Come and follow me. And people dropped what they were doing and followed him. Because there's just something indescribable about Jesus that when you meet him you just know that what he's about is the right thing. So what we're supposed to be doing with our lives is not giving grand explanations for why the church is a good thing and all the good things that our church is doing in the community and our world. It's to be a place where we can help people meet Jesus. Because that's going to do far more than any of our ex explanations could do. We could go to all sorts of theologians and have all sorts of down and deep conversations about what the doctrine of the Trinity is and how justification by faith works. We could have those conversations, but they don't mean nearly as much as just having that encounter with Christ. Because when you meet Jesus, you just know. And you do crazy things when you meet Jesus that you wouldn't think you'd do. You start realizing that it's about loving people. That our, our world is about seeking justice for everyone. You do crazy things like the person who we celebrate in our nation tomorrow Martin Luther King Jr., who decided that the status quo simply wasn't good enough. And it's worth laying down my life to see that all people are created equal. All people should be treated equal. Justice should be something that everyone has, not just the select few not just the people who have money or prestige or power, but every one of God's children deserves justice, deserves love, deserves peace, deserves dignity. And so, as we remember the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. this weekend, as we go about our daily lives, let's remember that it's about introducing people to Jesus. And once we know Jesus, once the world knows Jesus, the rest simply makes sense. We see things in a new way because there's just something about Jesus that we can't quite describe. It just gets us deep down. We just know, we just know that whatever Jesus is asking is worth laying down our lives for because it's simply the only way that makes sense. I pray that you know this Jesus in your life. And I pray that you are a method by which other people come to know Jesus. Because that's how the word is spread. It's not because some guy like me gets up here and talks about Jesus using beautiful words for a few minutes on Sunday morning. It's because all of you, all of you go out and you have a conversation with your friend and you live your life in such a way that Jesus just makes sense. And the way of the world is not the way it of money and power and fame. But it's really about love and dignity for every single human being. I pray that you meet the, the Jesus that lets you know that in your heart. And I pray that
that you shine that light of Jesus to the world. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night. That we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. The 